to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A blessed evening to all of you who are here with us in the Shrine of Jesus Divine Word. We welcome our new seminarians here with us and uh, also those who are joining us through this live stream. I would like to focus this reflection on the first reading as I usually do during weekdays because hardly it is taken or for as material for reflection in the uh, in homilies the uh, context of uh, the prophet Ezekiel is that of the exile and uh, this experience of the exile of the of Israel was not everything negative there were also good things that emerged from that experience for example the experience of uh, exile of these people led them to a deeper and a richer vision or reflection of who God is and a deeper appreciation also of uh, their relationship with, with God. We call it now spirituality. No. Who is God for them? In the past, God appeared that uh, as if he was at the disposition of God's people, at the service of their whims and caprices, their needs and requests. And uh, many times, God is considered as their partner in their wars, always ready to manifest you know, His power in favor of them. Now, with the experience of, of uh, the exile, and especially in the vision that uh, Ezekiel has, in, uh, as we heard in today's reading, God manifests himself differently. God appears here as a mysterious being, and there seems to be a veil that covers his being and uh, that in a way differentiates him from his people. God makes himself in a way as if unreachable, although faith affirms his presence among them. Almost unrecognizable according to the religious tradition of Israel, almost like indifferent, insensible to the sufferings now of his people. But in innumerable instances, we find Jesus, or God rather, with his compassion for his people and solidarity are clearly manifested. The message of this vision of uh, Ezekiel of God is that God wants to elevate Israel's vision of him, of, of God, or the spirituality, the kind of relationship. It is not to be any more within the dynamics as if that God is at their disposition but rather God showing himself really as a mysterious being separate yet he is present and with this experience therefore of 
the mystery of God that people may learn to revere Him and give Him homage. And this is experience. This is expressed precisely by the abundance of images that we find in the readings today, now, in the vision of uh, Ezekiel. This vision, this abundance of images, God wants ultimately to reveal Himself through this mystery, through His glory. When we enter into the things of God, liturgy, prayer, etc., we come with devotion, with reverence, expressing our adoration to this God, to this mysterious God. He revealed Himself in Jesus Christ, but He remains also a mystery, a spirit, calling us always to have that attitude of adoration, reverence, just as when we enter the, the church. No? For example, we do not just walk as if we are in the marketplace or anywhere else, but it is no, because of our consciousness that it is indeed the house of God, for example, or the other venues where we encounter God. Again, these two poles have to be there. We profess the nearness of God, the concreteness of God, as He had come among us through His incarnation. He became a human person. That's why we receive Him, His body and blood in, in the Eucharist. But at the same time, also that dimension of God as mystery with His glory to infuse in us that reverence, respect, and that we may not attempt to, manip to manipulate God because God is beyond us, yet He is present among us. May our uh, worship of God enable us to grow in our love, devotion, respect, obedience to Him, but also recognize Him in the concreteness of our celebration, the concreteness of Jesus Christ who comes to us as food, as sacrament, as word, as good news proclaimed in our liturgy. Amen.